Hi guys, today I'll be installing this Starlink. The Starlink kit includes a PoE or power over internet injector, modem, the dish and 100 feet of Cat6 cable, and a tripod stand which is capable of being screwed down to a base or platform. I won't be using the tripod mount, but a separately purchased roof mount sold by Starlink. It includes a mounting plate and hardware, cable clips, ceiling tape, and a carrying bag. I apologize for the wind here, but to be honest, this is a low wind day for where we live. The winds out here are just incredible. We lose shingles every year, and everybody that has an asphalt roof loses shingles every year. And I was just looking over here, and they're trying to repair their roof as well. So as soon as I get the money, I'll be putting in a metal roof. I don't know why anyone put asphalt out in this area. Such a beautiful day. The Rocky Mountains are out. See them nice and clear. Other than the wind, it's just great. So my plan here is to get rid of this antenna. This is for an older LTE or even the 4G network. But now with the new smart hubs, they get full bars in this area, so you don't even need this antenna. So I'll rip this out, uh, install our Starlink here, and I was really hoping I could fish the line from the Starlink into the house using this line, but it's all secured and there's just no slack in it whatsoever to, to pull it through. So I will have to run the line on the exterior of the house, which are really unfortunate. We don't have an attic, believe it or not, so this is a vaulted ceiling roof. So I can't even fish it through the attic, which would be the ideal situation. I'm gonna jump down really quick, show you how I'm gonna run the line. And you should always plan out your line before you get up here and, and uh, install the unit. Then I'll go through a really quick install, and what I'm looking forward to the most is actually the speed numbers in the end. So let's get started. So there's the other line that I was really hoping to use but there's just no slack in it at all. So what I'm going to do is run the line underneath the drip edge and then I'm going to go into this corner and secure it to the exterior wall. And I've already marked a location where I'm going to use the hammer drill and uh, enter the wall through this point here. If you're ever struggling to determine where to drill the hole and you don't know how to transfer it from the inside to the outside, just find a fixed point, which I use this window. I measured from the inside over and above and found my rim joist. And then I just transferred those measurements to the outside to get this mark here. I'm checking to see where the rafter is by tapping the roof. You can see where the roof is more solid and not bouncing and this is where your rafter is going to be. To locate the center of the rafter I'm using a small drill bit to test drill until I find solid wood. You'll want at least the two center holes of the roof mount to be secured to the rafter. If I had access to the attic I would also add wood backing for the corner holes of the bracket as well. Pre-drill each hole and fill with an exterior silicone or roof tar. Add the ceiling strips to the roof mount and secure in place with the included bolts. The two longer bolts are for the center holes and they use a half inch socket. Though these ceiling squares are supposed to be used for each bolt hole, I'm going to be using them for my roof clips. I'm confident the bolts won't leak without them as I silicone each hole prior to adding the ceiling strips. Thank you. 
All right, guys, I thought I'd just stop for a second here and just talk about this connection. I really don't like it. There's just way too much play in that. You know, the, the, the roof mount, excellent. It's very solid. That's not going anywhere. But the dish is kind of in the best case scenario right now where the wind's at my back, so it's not really catching it that much. But as soon as this dish flattens out, it's going to bounce all over the place because there's just so much play in this connection. So what I'm going to do is take the tube out, wrap it in tape, and hopefully take up some of this space or this void here and stop from bouncing all over the place. But to be honest, if, if that doesn't work, I'll just drill a hole from this side to this side and run a bolt through the whole thing to secure it. And if I was engineering this, I would have this quick connect lower. I put a notch on each side and then a clamp around it with a bolt running through it. So once you put the quick connect in, you just tighten up the bolt, squeeze this together, and you'd be good to go. But you know, what do I know? Elon, if you want to take that idea, just remember me and send me a check, please. Before securing the cable to the roof, I'm leaving some slack in the line. This will allow the dish to be able to be lifted out and service if needed. It's a good idea to tape the end of the connection before throwing it off the roof or passing it through a wall so it doesn't get covered in dirt and debris. I ended up securing the line to the inside corner of this wall with the included clips. I'm drilling a one inch hole with a hammer drill and wood spade bit to pass the cable to the inside of the house. I'm adding some foam to protect the line and center it within the hole, then finishing with some exterior silicone. Starlink now offers a cable routing kit if desired, but this purchase wasn't yet an option when I ordered my kit. All right, so I got the line on the inside here, kind of all coiled up. It's a drop ceiling on this side, but the side I want to install it on is a finished ceiling. So what I'm gonna do is drill a hole in the top plate from the other side, and I'm gonna fish the line down to right about here, and then use one of these fancy dancy uh, cover plates. So it's a rubber grommet, so I can pass through the wire through this. But what's great about this is you don't need a receptacle box in the wall to install it. So it has these clips which pinch the drywall between the plate and the clip. So say my fingers the drywall, when you tighten up the screw, it uh, pinches the drywall and holds the plate in place. The white wire goes from the modem to the white side of the power block and the black wire that we just ran plugs into the black side of the power block and finally the power block is plugged in and the dish should search for a satellite within a few minutes. Download the Starlink app and it'll walk you through how to set up your network and then it's good to go. I'll have some detailed speed tests later in the video but I quickly wanted to check the speeds and I wasn't disappointed. The first test is our current Telesmart Hub and our second is Starlink. All 
All right guys, it's been about a week or so now. And I just want to do a quick little recap on the insulation and also how the service has been working. I did end up putting a clamp. My, my plan was to put an exhaust clamp, stainless steel here so it wouldn't rust. But I came across these high pressured hose clamps. They can really crank down on and they're stainless steel as well so you won't have to worry about rust. But it takes away a little bit of the play. It's not perfect, but it'll, it's better than nothing. And remember to make sure to leave yourself some slack because if you ever have to pull it out, you have the space. Or you know how technology works, they're always upgrading it. So if they come out with a new dish, you may have to splice it in, who knows, it might be a direct connect. But then you have that extra little wire there just in case. I ran the wire down the roof here and along the side of the house and we'll hop down. Runs down the side of the house and comes in through the basement at this point here. I ended up fishing the line down this wall. I don't know if you can see this, but uh, there's a cover plate there that the wire comes out of and then goes over to the modem. Here are a few speed test comparisons with TELUS Smart Hub on the left and Starlink on the right. You can really see the speed differences on the weekend when TELUS slows down due to more usage in my area. So here's my personal numbers breakdown, and remember your numbers are going to vary greatly depending on your area. The Starlink is more expensive up front, but roughly the same monthly fee. Starlink includes unlimited data, and personally I'm getting about 10 times the speed download and half the speed upload compared to TELUS. For me this install was a no-brainer. My previous speeds made any online activity painfully slow, and I can now enjoy live stream sports events with no buffering. Worth noting is Starlink is currently in beta testing and you may have disruptions in your internet during this time. That being said, they seem to have huge ambitions and have been talking about having 300 megabits per second download speeds with a 20 millisecond latency within a year. I guess only time will tell for the future of Starlink. Well guys, thanks for watching and hopefully you found this video informative. And like always, liking, commenting, subscribing is always greatly appreciated. Till next time.